When it comes to creating a trailer, there are important questions that need to be answered. How much do you show? What exactly do you tell? Because just like each film is different, each trailer needs to be different as well to represent this. I'm Jessica Fox, and I'm a creative director at Mark Bullen & Associates, and these are the questions that we ask ourselves. Creating a trailer is a very collaborative process. Filmmakers bring their work to a studio, and it's the studio's job to work with the filmmakers to create a vision of how that film is going to be released to the public. Maybe this is in theaters, maybe it's online, maybe it's in the fall, maybe it's in the summer. Filmmakers and studios then bring in agencies, and it's a job of all of us working together to create a trailer, a first look at this film. When deciding how to best represent a film in trailer form, we often sit back and look at what the film made us feel. Is this a film that's best explained through a story to allow the audience to understand what's happening in the movie? Or is this a film that's best explained through its style? In either case, we pick the elements that are going to work best to support the narrative that we think is the strongest in the film. Some of the advantages when you have a film that is completely finished is you get a real sense of what the director's vision is. You're hearing the music, you're seeing the pacing, you understand what the tone is, and then you try your best to replicate that tone and evoke that in the trailer you're working on. You were a movie star, remember? Shut up. Now you're about to destroy what's left of your career. Listen to me, let's make a comeback. You're becoming a trending topic. I got a chance to do something right. I gotta take it. But inside an agency, there's also a collaboration that happens. From creative directors and producers who help to oversee the process and create what they think the story should be, to editors who are in there with the material figuring out exactly how to make each shot and each dialogue work, to assistant editors who mine through all of the material you have in order to catalog and organize everything for editors to use to music supervisors who help to select that perfect piece of music or sound design. What to show and what to leave behind is a tough one. You want to make sure that you're showcasing some of the best assets the film has to offer. Oftentimes this is pedigree, your cast, your director, sometimes your producers. This information is important to let the audience know that you're going to be seeing some of your favorite people involved in this film. This information is also important to help elevate the film. Big names associated with films tend to imply bigger budgets. You can expect perhaps more of a bigger spectacle. When it comes to story, just how much do you tell? Well, you want to tell enough so the audience understands what's happening. But ideally, you don't want to tell so much that everything feels completely wrapped up. This can sometimes be tricky in stories where there's a lot of suspense, and the audience is left to wonder, will they or won't they? Will someone escape? Will this thing happen? We take the engine, and we control the world. When is the time? Soon. Essentially, you want to tell enough of the story to get an audience's interest, but you don't want to tell so much that they feel they've already seen the full film. Another element that can help decide what gets into a trailer and what stays out is relying on what's known as quadrants. Quadrants break down your audience demographic into categories based on age and gender. Typically, a film and those involved in making the film would love to hit all four quadrants. At a very base level, when thinking of quadrants, there are four basic ones. There's younger males, younger females, older males and older females. Of course, there are certain films whose prime audience falls into one or two of these quadrants. But most films would love to get as many people from each quadrant as possible interested. And that's where marketing comes in. Certain genres appeal to certain demographics more easily. So action films, big blockbuster films, your large franchise films typically find a comfortable home in younger audiences, specifically younger male audiences. It's not to say everyone doesn't enjoy them, but that's where you're getting your bulk of people interested. So then what do you do if you want to show that this movie has more to offer than just something perhaps a younger male audience would be interested in? That's when you might choose to include information in a trailer that's specifically targeted toward a different group. For instance, in an action adrenaline-filled movie, if there's a love interest, that might be of interest to a different quadrant. Including that might broaden your appeal. What do you want, Peter? I want to go back on my trip with the girl who I really like and tell her how I feel. MJ, I am Spider-Man. No, of course I'm not. I mean, it's kind of obvious. Just as audiences are ever evolving, so is the way to measure and categorize these audiences. So quadrants are just one tool, and by no means is it the only thing that studios and agencies look at when deciding how to market a film. 
One way to determine who is most interested in seeing your film is through audience testing. Sometimes there are plot points or characters that are introduced later in a film, but because of their importance, feels necessary to include them in the trailer. This could be because the character is a well-known actor that's going to help elevate the movie, or the plot point is something that helps promise more to the film. Maybe a sense of hope in a movie that seems very dark and depressing. I come back to you now, at the turn of the tide. Another example of a way to frame a trailer is to actually make it two trailers at the same time, known as companion pieces. In doing so, you might tell one person's story in one trailer and another person's story in another trailer. These two trailers could, in theory, live separately, as you would be getting a full story in one trailer and a different but full complete story in this other trailer. However, when put together, they give a greater sense of what the film has to offer and also promises the idea that you're going to be seeing a story from different perspectives. What I love about Charlie, he loves being a dad. It's almost annoying how much he likes it. A little too new. I've been what I love about Nicole, loving you. she's a great dancer, infectious. If you have a story that has a love interest, also has a lot of action, has a bit of drama, has some suspense, you might cut multiple television spots, each one focusing on one of those elements. Taken as a whole, they're all true to the film and they're all part of the greater picture. But you can individually select where each one of these television spots go, so that spot is getting to the audience that's going to be the most receptive to that message. So, when there are so many stories to tell, and so many different ways to tell these stories, every decision is very deliberate. A lot goes into thinking about how this best serves the film, and how this is going to fit into the two and a half minutes you have to show the audience what the film has to offer. So when we're speaking about quadrants, or testing audiences, or working from completed films, or working from dailies, or telling a story in a teaser or a trailer or a TV spot. The options are limitless. What do you include? What do you leave behind? The answers are as diverse as the films.